Hi everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So today we're gonna to take a look at keying inside of Nuke using the Keylight node. And uh, the Keylight node is especially helpful when you're trying to key out things that have partial transparency or aren't particularly opaque. In this case, we have this girl's hair, the strands of hair we wanna try and keep. And before I get any further, this is from this still, this is just a still image, no animated properties to it. And the background is from a mini series called Merlin, which was released by Lionsgate Entertainment, I believe, way back when. This is old Shake Tutorial Media, so I want to make sure and give credit to them for having this. All right, so let's go and take a look at what we have. So I'll press 1 on my green screen footage, press spacebar to go full screen. I'll press F to fit it to the window that I have here at a whole integer value of 100% in this case. So I press R for red, G for green, B for blue, A for alpha. So I can see I'll use plus and minus to zoom in the footage itself. Pretty clean. It has a little bit of fringing along the edges right here, but not much at all. So the red channel a little bit, green channel pretty clean, obviously, and the blue channel a little bit of fringing. But especially for the time period, especially being shot for TV, and uh, as far as the quality of the light on the green screen, very, very good footage for us to work with. If we were to adjust the gamma sliders a little bit here and the exposure sliders, we can see that there's some noise on the screen, but that's probably noise from actually being filmed and then just texture on the green screen itself. So, but overall, this is wonderfully shot green screen footage. So we should be able to get pretty decent results with this. So like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use the key light node in order to do our keying in this case. And this has a number of inputs on it. You don't have to use all of them. We'll use some of them, but I'll give you alternatives as well. But the one you for sure wanna use is the source, which means what do you wanna take off of a blue screen or a green screen? So I'll go ahead and plug that into our green screen footage. And we're gonna start with that. So I'll press one to view it, and I'll double click on the key light node to see its properties. And we have a number of options, especially if we flip down all these triangles, it can be a little bit overwhelming in all the options you have. Honestly, I don't tend to use all of these. I use a set of these and then I use other nodes after I pull my initial key to get the rest of the way there. But we'll talk about some of them as we're going through. So first off, most important one is screen color, meaning do you have a blue screen or a green screen? Certain keys like Primat will take out any particular background color, whatever it's red, green, blue, pink, whatever it might be, whereas the key light node is optimized for shades of green or shades of blue. And to tell what color our screen is, we need to go ahead and click on this black color swatch right here so we get the little eyedropper. And now we hold down Control and Alt. And remember, I, I'm viewing my key light node so I can see the result. Hold down Control and Alt. I'm gonna go ahead and left click somewhere on the green screen, trying to stay away from her hair and we'll go ahead and take a look at our initial result. So it's a little bit hard to see. I mean, you can definitely see there's stuff left over, but we're gonna view our alpha channel, press A for alpha. I'll press spacebar to go full screen. So I can see that there's a lot of green screen left over still. We have the upper right, screen right, upper left, lower left, lower right. There's a lot left over. Now you're gonna hold down Control and Alt and left click and drag, hold down Control and just left click in particular spots to try and get this better, but you can kind of see that we're never gonna get everything. That did a pretty good job of getting overall is closer, but I'm guessing we probably lost some hair detail over here. And you can see if I go and click over, you can see there's more hair detail that we lost when we got that one that got everything black. So the tricky part is we wanna get the background to black and the foreground to white, but without compromising and losing this hair detail. So the first thing we can do to make things a lot easier on ourselves is that in the original footage, we don't really have probably three-fourths of this shot, or at least half of it, we don't need to worry about it all. All this over here, we don't need to worry about. All this over here, we don't need to worry about. We only are interested in the area directly surrounding the character. So the first thing we use is what's called a garbage mat, meaning we're gonna draw a roto shape. There's other ways to do as well, but we're gonna draw a roto shape and say, hey, we don't care about all this garbage outside of the shape, only what's inside of it. So I've already set up, if we go ahead and look at this, the footage is 720 by 576. I've already set up my project settings. I'll press S for settings, well down here. I've already set up my resolution for my project size to that. So if I go ahead and press O to add a roto node, it's going to default to that size. So with this selected, I'll press spacebar to go full screen. I'll press plus a couple times to get closer. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a shape roughly around her area, but making sure not to get too close to where I'm going to cut off any of her hair detail. And I think this is hair kind of jumping up right here. So I'm gonna go around that as well. Now, if this was animated, I'd want to make sure 
and animate this through the image sequence. But since this is one still frame, I don't have quite as much to worry about. Now, the other thing to mention is I don't want to get like all the way over here and try and trace it perfectly because that's the whole reason we have it against the green screen. We don't want to get too close because we want the cure to take care of the actual perfect edges and the transparency of the hair. We're just helping it by saying, hey, we don't need to worry about any of this outside of here. We never have her move in these areas. And so we're going to get rid of that from the get go. All right, so how do we use this? So first off, I'm going to double click on this. I'm over here. There we go. Let's go over. We'll go to the node tab and under label, I'm going to go and call this G mat or garbage mat. Just so I can know what is this photo shape for? It's for the garbage mat. And I'll press F to fit this. And there's a couple ways you can apply your garbage mat. We'll go ahead and use the key light inputs on it right here. So it's called out mat or garbage mat. They're kind of interchangeable. I'll plug this guy in. And if I view my key light node, nothing has happened yet. It hasn't gotten rid of all this junk. That's because in the key light node itself, I'll double click to open up its properties. Under the out mat component, you can see it's set to none. Now, when we were using this roto shape, we created an alpha channel with our shape. So it makes sense we go ahead and use alpha. But when we do that, you can see it actually has it backwards. It's gotten rid of the, all the stuff we wanted to keep, and it's kept all the garbage that we wanted to get rid of. So it would make sense we want to go ahead and invert this, and now we have the selection that we want. Now, if I go ahead and flip down the triangle here so I don't see the outlines for the roto shape, you can see that we have a very sharp edge here. And obviously we need to clean our mat. But one thing to mention is typically, almost always, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't, I selected my roller shape and press B for blur. I'm gonna select the channels to blur as the alpha. We're usually always going to blur our alpha to make it a softer selection. And if we have this on our background, it's going to bleed in or feed into our background a lot more smoothly than if we had this razor sharp edge from our roto shape without being blurred. So I'm gonna leave this unblurred for now, or at least without this pumped up for now. I'll go and select this blur node and press D for disable. Because for now, I wanna try and key this without having to worry about selecting partially blurred pixels. And let's go ahead and start trying to get this. So the challenge is we wanna keep hair detail on both sides, but we need to get the background to black and we always need to make sure that the actual interior of the character is white as well. And if we darken down our view, we can see that there's still transparency in her quite a bit. So section off your keys is another thing that can be really helpful. We're not gonna do that in this particular video, at least maybe just for a little bit. But let's go ahead and talk about how we can get this going. So let's go ahead and see if we can, at least just for this example, the first time using key light, we can get a decent key and see what our results are. So I'm gonna control F click, see how I can do. I think I might be cutting off a little bit of her hair right here. So I'm gonna drag this up a little bit. And there we go. And we'll make sure we're back on our key light. And let's see if we can find a spot that looks like we're getting most everything that we want, or at least a good starting point. That looks pretty good. We're getting, we're keeping the hair detail here. Most of this is here. There's maybe a few strands we're missing here and there, but overall we're keeping a good amount of it. Now, again, what I'm gonna do here for this first tutorial is not ideal, but I don't wanna get too complex in this very first example. So first off, we pump up our viewer luminance. We can see that we still have a lot of the green screen left over. We can get rid of that by flipping down this little screen mat button right here, or a triangle. And if we clip white, or if we do clip black, it's going to push things that are close to black all the way to black. But you can see the further we go, we start eroding away the detail that we're trying so hard to keep. So we pretty much lost all of our hair detail. And as you can imagine, our results not gonna look very good. Now, if we had Samuel Jackson in the Star Wars prequels and he had no hair, then yeah, maybe that would be a little bit more acceptable. But so we're gonna push this as little as possible, probably just a little fraction. And maybe we'll stick with something like that. Somewhere around there. So we still have some green screen left over here. We have some green screen left over here. Uh, and we do have some left up here. Remember, I have this pumped up 248%. If we view it normally, there's not nearly as much left as we thought. Now, if I was to put, if this was animated, I put this on a background and I could see this noise chattering and animating, then I would need to fix that. But in this case, since I don't know what it looks like animated over the actual intended background, we'll just say that's eh, decent enough for now. We could go ahead and if I click to the right of this number right here and use the up arrow key, I can up it just a little bit at a time or to the left of it. I can up it just a little bit, little by little until I see that I'm starting to lose more hair detail and I try and back off at that point. So maybe we'll get, be able to get a little bit more. 
And let's go ahead from here, let's view this on some different backgrounds. So first off, here's our result. And if I merge it, well, this is a good way we can see how it is comparing to original footage. So I'm gonna make a constant. So I'll press tab and type constant, which is like a solid in After Effects. And I'm gonna make it the same color as our original green screen. So I'll double click on the constant, click on the, the eyedropper, control and left click on the background. It's gonna change the constant that color. Let's go ahead and just merge this on top of that. Now I could do this inside the node. So I could select the background node, uh, background pipe and plug it in there and just view it. And I need to change my key light from final result to composite and that'll put it on there. But I think in this case, I'm gonna go and just change it, keep it on final result instead of using the background input, I'll go and just merge it on top. So I'll select the key light, M for merge, and I'll put it on top of the B input, and basically the same thing. Sometimes key light does some nice things in actually doing the composite. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So if I zoom in, and I'm gonna try and do this at a whole pixel value, and I press one, and then I select my original footage and press two, and then I go ahead and in the viewer, press W for wipe, I have this wipe where I can wipe from one side to the other. So you can see over here is me putting it over this background right here, the composite, the one, and then over here is the two, this is the original footage. So am I losing a lot of the green screen footage? I'll press space bar to go full screen. Well, it looks like I'm not losing a whole lot. Over here, it doesn't look like I'm losing much. Looks like most of that hair detail is being retained. So that looks like that side's working well. I mean, we're using, losing a little bit here, but not too much. And on this side, I press plus to zoom a little bit more. It looks like we're losing a little bit of this hair detail, like this strand right here, which if this was animated and moving around, that would be an issue. We don't want pieces of hair or strands of hair just kind of going in and out of visibility, but not too bad for just trying to do this all in one key. Now, again, we still do have some noise left down here and we can kind of max or, or uh, amplify that to see a little bit easier by turning down the luminance. Over here doesn't look too bad. Again, we still have some noise in the lower left here. We would ideally pull a separate key for over there, but not too bad. And again, we're not really losing too much hair detail, which is ideal, losing just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and press W to disable our wipe. We'll go back. And so not too bad. Another thing way that we could check this, if we're using something that's a little bit, or at least oftentimes is helpful, is we'll make another constant and we're gonna make it somewhat of a neutral gray. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the color wheel. I'll just put this somewhere around halfway. And we can go ahead and view this on this as well. So instead of the B input being the green background, I'll go ahead and use the gray background. And this sometimes can be useful in diagnosing, do we have a lot of noise left over or anything like that as well. So I mean, overall we're doing pretty good. We, again, we do have noise here. Let's go ahead and see, obviously the ultimate test, if you're lucky enough to have the final background when you're doing your key, is to put it on, on top of the background. So let's go ahead and take our Merlin background right here and let's merge it over that. So I'm gonna take my B input, plug it into the background that it's intended to be on. And again, I could absolutely do this instead of using the merge node. I could just plug this into background if I feel I'm happy with my key and inside the key light node itself, go ahead and just change it to composite and we can go ahead and take a look at it here. So, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. Obviously the color correction between her and the background doesn't match. And so we're gonna go ahead and remedy that. And just because I like to use different color correction tools, not just what's built into the key light node itself, I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to final output. I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my A input above, this is my B input below. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my color correction in between when it comes out of the key light for the, the girl and on the way to the background itself. So one thing that we need to do, and I'm not gonna get into too much in this video, is right now, all of the green pixels, or at least the pixels that are partially hidden in the alpha channel that are transparent, those are, if I try and color correct this as is, it's not gonna get color corrected the same amount as these areas that are completely white. And one other thing I almost forgot to mention really quick is remember on the interior of her, if I go ahead, I want this to be completely white. If I darken this down, you can see there's still transparency inside her mask. You may or may not notice that when she's on top of the background, but we wanna make sure she's not see-through like a ghost. So in our key light node under clip white, we're gonna adjust this the slightest amount until she's not see-through anymore. And you can see this is literally a teeny tiny amount. Like I, I've done this, what is this? Like 
it's only several hundredths of a percentage. So this has pretty much gotten rid of the transparency in her mask. And while it looks like we've done a lot when I have the luminance turned all the way down, if we look at it normally, we've actually hardly adjusted anything at all, but she's not gonna be see-through anymore. So on the background, I'll go and press A to go back to my color view. On the way to the merge node, I wanna go and try and color correct her to match the background more. But because these pixels are transparent, we need to use something before we do our color correction called an unpremultiply node or unpremult. And you can see it makes it look really ugly from the get-go, but all those pixels that were partially transparent before, it's pretty much making them fully opaque. So anything that we color correct in this area where it's white in the alpha channel is gonna get hit 100%. And since we unpremultiplied, all those pixels here are gonna get hit 100% by the color correction as well. If we don't do that, then these pixels only get color corrected a fractional amount depending on their transparency. I'll go over that in another video um, in more detail explaining it some other time. But so I'll go and add a grade node, a color correction node, and at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and add a pre-multiply node. So basically we're lifting off the transparency. We're color correcting all the pixels together at the same overall amount. And then we're reapplying that transparency to those pixels that are transparent and then put it on the background. Again, if that's a little bit confusing. I'll cover that in a later video in the future. All right, so I'm gonna rush through the rest of this because I don't wanna make this video too horribly long. We're already moving in on 18 minutes. But let's go ahead and in the gray node itself, I wanna make sure that her color tint overall kind of matches. And again, there's many ways you can do this. I'm gonna go and click on the multiply color wheel and go ahead and try and move her into those kind of warmer regions. All right, so we'll go somewhere around there for now. And now we need to take a look. If I pump this up, you can see her black levels do not match the black levels of the background. And again, it depends on somewhat the art direction. They might say, oh, there's this shiny background that's lit behind her. And so her black levels on the side that's not facing the light shouldn't be as, as bright. But in this case, I wanna try and lift them up a little bit to where they match a little bit more. So our black point right here, or our lift, we could go ahead and do that here as well. I'm gonna go and click on the color wheel since lift affects your shadows more. I'm gonna go ahead and lift these up a little bit, not too much. And if you squint your eyes, this helps a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and try and take it in that warmer direction as well, just a bit. And it's not gonna make a huge, huge difference, but we'll go ahead and try and get that in there just a little bit. If I go ahead and disable my gray nose, I'm going along, you can see we're kind of going in the right direction. And now let's go ahead and go the opposite of the spectrum. I wanna make sure that my highlights are kind of matching as well. So if I go ahead and pump this up, as these highlights in the background start to flare towards right, white, we kind of want, or start clipping, we kind of want her footage to start to do that as well. So we can see that her skin tones or highlights are starting to hit that around the same time. So we're not super far off there. And if we go in and click on these guys to reset them, we're actually not in too bad of shape right now. Now we always want to go channel by channel and take a look as well. So I'll press R for red. Does anything look grossly out of place? Mm, again, her, her black levels might be a little bit too dark, but again, I'm going to go with the background is really bright and she's on the opposite side of that. Uh, G for green, doesn't look too bad. B for blue. All right, doesn't look too shabby overall. Um, we might adjust her a little bit more, but again, for a very first video into the key light node, I don't want to dig too much into color correction and unpremultiplication and premultiplication, all that stuff. So for here, we'll go ahead and stop this here. Hopefully this has been a little bit helpful and given you a very bit of insight into the keying process. Again, we would cover this much differently if we were really trying to do this in production. We would do different keys for different sections. We would piece them together. We'd try to get rid of all the green spill and really color correct really, really in depth. But hopefully for a very first intro to key light, this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. And I will see you on the next Johnny How To.